All right, let's go ahead and get started. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rogan Ferguson. I'm a program manager working at Microsoft on Team Foundation Server, our on-premises, and Visual Studio Team Server, our hosted DevOps offerings. I'm here to talk to you today about migrating from TFS to VSTS in the cloud, specifically using the TFS database import service, which to stop myself from tripping up on that, I'm going to refer to as just the import service from here on out. Got to love marketing. Uh, so the import service is a high fidelity migration service that operates at the collection level. What I mean by that is it's going to bring all your data along by grabbing that collection and moving it into a brand new Visual Studio Team Services account. That's all your work items, all your builds, releases, your packages, or if you're using package management, if you're on one of the later versions. It's going to include your users, history, groups, you name it. It's as if we scooped you up from on-prem, put you in the VSTS, and your team is functioning at full capacity with all your history there from day one on VSTS. The process itself is broken down into six simple, easy steps, uh, which we do outline in a migration guide that I will provide to you at the I'll link to it at the end of this talk. Of course, we're a little bit time constrained today, so I'm going to try to focus on some of the key levels of migrating, get you off on the right steps, so that way hopefully you too can be successful with your migration from TFS to VSTS. The first three phases are really focused on A, getting stakeholders on board with the migration to VSTS, and also making sure you have the prerequisites covered. Well, phases four, five, and six are going to be focused on validation, preparation, and actually running that import. So the first thing you need to kind of answer and get on board of all your stakeholders in your leadership team is, why do we want to migrate to VSTS? I'll give you two reasons. Number one, you're getting the latest and greatest features every three weeks on VSTS. All right, the new Kanban board features, the new release features, you're getting it first, you get it right away. If you are on on-prem, you're going to have to wait three to six months to get those features. And on top of that, you have to go and install that new version of TFS. Speaking of installing, you're maintaining your own hardware. You're paying someone, whether it's an employee or a contractor, to probably manage the uptime for your TFS instance and those upgrades. So by moving the VSTS, we often see customers seeing a significant cost reduction. So moving the VSTS gets you features now. It gets you Microsoft handling the uptime, and it's going to save you money. As far as the prerequisites go for the import service, we require two. One, you need to be using Azure Active Directory, AAD. We'll talk more about that later when we look at migrating identities. Number two, you need to be on one of the two most recent released versions of TFS. Right now, that's TFS 2018 and TFS 2018 Update 1. I'll put an asterisk on 2018. We just released TFS 2018 Update 2. TFS 2018 will go away in about two to three weeks. So. You need to do one more upgrade to get onto that latest version in order to complete the migration. Once you have those prerequisites done, you get into the fun part of this. Let's actually migrate this collection. So we're going to take a look at validation, preparation, and import. Let me switch over to my demo machine. When you're running a migration, you're going to be using this tool called TFS Migrator. It's your one-stop shop for completing migrations and doing your validate, preparation, and imports. I'm going to start off by running my validate command. So I simply cd into the folder with TFS Migrator. I'm going to invoke TFS Migrator. The command is going to match the step in the import process, and I'm going to give it a pointer to my collection. In this case, my collection is on my local box. Of course, you can provide it a pointer to a machine that might be off in your server bank. That's all fine and dandy. I'm going to include preview features. That's currently package management. And it's going to start running a validation. The reason we need to do a validation is that there are small, minute differences between TFS and VSTS. For most cases, they're exactly the same. But when you think about the process customization space, that's where things differ slightly. What the validate does is it finds anything that you might be using on TFS that can't automatically be fixed by the import process that you need to go manually fix yourself in order to com successfully come into that in, uh, VSTS. Essentially put, it's a rinse and repeat process. You're going to run this. Hopefully, you don't have any errors. I see a lot of customers that don't. For this one, because of the short time span of this talk, I can see I don't have any errors, so I'm good to go. Um, but if you do, you go look up the documentation for fixing that error, fix it, rerun, ensure it's all gone. Once you got rid of all your errors, you're good to go. Let's quickly look at the logging file, though, just to give you an idea. So I would come into TFS Migrator. It's going to generate a logs folder. The log folder is going to have the collection name, so I'm Fabricam. I'm going to go to the most recent run. 
You're presented with several different types of logs. The one you're going to be interested in, though, is your TFS migrator.log. That's the all up log. For scanning through this log, what I would recommend doing is scanning to the bottom and looking under the results section. I can see right now that all my validations passed, but let's say it didn't. I would say, oh, it failed in the process space. I would scroll up to that section, highlight the error, go look it up on the documentation, fix it, rerun validate, ensure it's clean. Once you have a validation that's running successfully, you need to move on to what we call the prepare step. The prepare step essentially helps you generate a set of import files that you'll need to execute your import. It follows the same command style that we would see with all other TFS migrator commands. Invoke the exe, and then go ahead and put the prepare command in there, because that's what we're running. I'm going to give it a pointer to my collection. I'm going to give it two additional parameters, though. The first one is going to be called my account region. This is where I want to import into. It's a shorthand code. CUS stands for Central United States. That's somewhere in Iowa. When you actually go to complete a migration, we have a workbook inside of the migration guide that you can fill out what that little code is for the region you want to go to. So when you reach this step, you'll have a good idea of what you need to put there. The second is going to be a pointer to my AAD tenant. So the parameter is actually called tenant domain name. And in this case, I want to point it at the Microsoft tenant. So I use Microsoft.com. Oops. Helps if I can spell. There we go. So if you're unsure what that tenant domain name is, you'll want to take the back half of your email. So in this case, I see my email here, roferg at microsoft.com. The microsoft.com portion is going to be the pointer to my AAD tenant. We use this so we can generate a logging file that will help describe how we expect the identities to be imported in VSTS, which we'll talk about more in just a second. So you'll be asked to sign in here. All right, conference internet doesn't like me. Don't worry, I actually prepared this ahead of time. If the validation, once the validation succeeds, or the preparation succeeds, what you'll actually end up getting is the set of log files that you expect to get, but you get those two additional files. The first one is called an import.json or more formally called an import specification file. It's like your recipe cookbook that describes how the import should be run. We're going to fill this out right before we get to the import step. The other one is called the identity map log.csv. Let's open one up that I already have. This is a log file that describes how we expect identities to be imported. Identities are mapped and imported into VSTS if you have what's called an Azure AD Connect setup, unformally called a directory sync. What happens when you have Azure AD Connect set up is that every change, for example, my AD identity, North America Rofer, that happens to my identity gets brought across and manifested in my AAD identity, Roferg at Microsoft.com. It's done by taking the unique identifier or the SID for my AD identity and plugging it into a parameter called the on-premises security identifier in AAD. That way, anytime I make a change on both ends, we can go back and forth. We use that same parameter to figure out which identity maps to where. So given this, there are two ways an identity can be imported into VSTS. The first one is going to be called historically. What this means is the user will not be imported as a member of the collection, but instead will take their display name, in this case bootcamp, and will go ahead and manifest it in all the history inside the collection. So you can still go look up history that belonged to that particular identity that was imported historically, but they will not be a member of the collection. They will not have permissions. It's the same as if you had an employee that had membership to your TFS collection, they made some history, and then they left the company and you removed them from the collection. Actively means that we expect everything from this AD identity to be mapped into this AAD identity. So in my case, everything that was owned by North America Roferg will be mapped into my AAD identity, Roferg at Microsoft.com. So when I sign in, I'll have access to all that data. I'll have all my permissions. And it's as if I just magically appeared in the hosted world on VSTS. If you're unsure of why an identity is being imported historically, there's two common reasons. Number one, sometimes people set up their syncs to run once a week, sometimes once a month. I've seen that as well. You might get a new employee who came in and they just haven't, a sync hasn't run, so nothing's been manifested in AAD. Other times, people get excluded for some reason. Work with your AAD admin, 
get them included in the sync, and you can rerun the prepare command as many times as you want to generate a new logging file to get an understanding of how your identities will be imported. Once you're happy with the way your identities will be imported, we're going to move on to the fun part, which is actually going ahead and running the import itself. When I go to run the import, the first thing I need to do is I actually need to take my collection offline and detach it. So I'm going to do that from the uh, TFS administration console. The reason we detach a collection is that with every TFS instance, there is a commonly shared collection called the configuration database. This database is shared by all TFS collections in a TFS instance. There's certain data in that configuration database. A prime example is going to be the identity data. Again, you can love conference internet. Good thing I planned for this. The identity data, when you detach the collection, is going to be scooped up from that configuration database and plucked into the collection database. That's going to allow you to package that data up and provide it to the import service so we can import it into VSTS. It's super important that you detach the collection first. Now, once you detach the collection, you need to actually go ahead and generate a way for us to get access to that data in that collection. There are two ways you can do this. Unfortunately, due to the limited time in this talk, I won't be able to cover both of them, but I'll briefly describe them. The first way, if your collection database is under 150 gigs in size, is to use a data application to your package or a DAC pack. A DAC pack is really schema and data. It's wrapped up into a nice little file. You put it up in an Azure storage container, give us a pointer to that storage container, and we slurp it into VSTS. If your collection is over 150 gigs in size, you will need to create a SQL IaaS VM in Azure. You will need to upload the data to that virtual machine and go ahead and run the import from there. TFS Migrator will let you know if you are over that size limit or not. Most customers we find are under the 150 gig limit, uh, but we do have a way to handle those larger collections. I can talk more about it after the talk if you fall into the situation as to why we had to go down that path and what you can do and best practices and tips to make that efficient. In this case, though, I'm just going to go with the DAC pack. So I pre-generated it, just like a baking show. I put the pie in the oven and pulled it out a little bit uh, earlier. And I'm actually going to go ahead and make sure it's uploaded into a storage account. The Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer is kind of Microsoft's first party solution for interfacing with storage accounts. You could do it through Azure, but we recommend using this tool in the migration guide. And we have documentation on how to work with it. So I've gone ahead and created a storage account called VSTS Import Demo. It's important that you create the storage account in the same region that you intend to import into. So remember back to that prepare command. I said, hey, I'm importing into central United States. Well, I'm going to want to make sure that I create that storage account in the same region. I'm then going to go ahead and create a blob container underneath it. I call mine import demo. And I'm going to go ahead and upload that DAC pack into it. Once it's up in the storage account, I need to provide a way for the import service to get access to it. This is where we're going to use what's called a shared access signature, or a SAS key for short. It's a delegated access key that allows us to get limited time access to this blob container in your storage account to pull the data out and bring it into VSTS. You need to make sure you have at least seven days set to the expiration, and all you require are read and list permissions. I'm going to go ahead and click Create. I'm going to copy the URL. Now, once I have this URL, I'll need to start working with that import specification file I talked about. It's the recipe book for letting me queue the import so I need to make sure that I place information on how to get access to my collection in this file. It's just a JSON file. It's broken up into different chunks. Let's work through it one by one. The first part here, source. That's the pointer to where I'm grabbing the data to bring it into VSTS. The location, as you can see here in the tip, that's simply just that SAS key. So I go ahead, highlight it, remove the text that was previously generated there. I put the SAS key in. I'm good to go. Next up, I need to provide the name of the DAC pack. Now, we try to cleverly think that you probably have a default collection, and you'd be surprised. There are a lot of people that just have a default collection. But in this case, mine is the Fabricam file is what I created. So that gives me the pointer to the file with my database information and a key to go ahead and access it. The next one is going to be the account name. Remember, the import service creates a brand new account every time it imports. So I need to make sure I pick an account name that isn't currently being used. 
Now you can put an account name in here, try to run an import, and it'll let you know if one's being used. But the way I like to try and figure out if something hasn't been used or not is I actually go ahead, open up a browser, and I just fire a name in there. So I'm a huge Trekkie fan. For those of you that were talking with me before the start of the talk, live long and prosper. Uh, so I'm just going to try Road for Star Trek, and we'll see if it's being used. So if you get a 404, it's an easy way to tell the account name isn't being used. I'm going to go ahead and copy that URL and that name. You don't need to put the visualstudio.com component in here. You just need to put the name in. So I'm just going to go ahead, wipe this out, and put my name in there that I want to have when I run the import. Now, here comes the important part. I need to pick a type of import. There are two types, a dry run and a production run. A dry run is a test run import. The account has a limited lifespan when you run an import with this type. It lasts between 15 to 21 days. After that, it's deleted. If you need to do more testing, you have to run another dry run. We do that because things can change. Our hosted instance is constantly getting updated, so we don't want you to sit with a dry run account for six months, and then on game day, try to throw that snap into the end zone and have it fall short. Please, 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 if you take one thing away from this talk, please do not run a production run import first. Run a dry run. We like to call them in the office shotgun imports when people go straight to production. I can guarantee you it doesn't go well. The import might succeed. Most people when they do production run imports right off the bat, it succeeds. But then what ends up happening is there are unique processes to that particular company that they didn't foresee having to clear. Getting sign off from an IT security team. Opening up holes in their firewall. So they have to completely roll back onto it. The dry run account is for you to play around with that. What things that are unique to my company that we need to make sure are set up after we're in VSTS to be successful when we get to the production run import. So again, please do a dry run import, at least one first. Once I've selected dry run, we'll quickly go through the other things. This validation data, notice that lovely checksum there at the bottom. This data is pre-generated by TFS Migrator, and this is like, what are we importing? What version are you coming from, and what region are we going to? It's checksum for a reason. If you change it, TFS Migrator will yell at you. Don't touch that data. If you do, you're going to have to put it back to what it was before. And if you can't remember what it was, you're going to have to rerun prepare to generate a new one. So my advice to you, don't touch it. And lastly, there's a list of those identities. It's just their SIDs that we had from that file. So if for some reason you didn't want to import someone actively, and I do get some customers that say that, look up their SID in the log file and just go ahead and delete it from here. And then even if they were included in an AD connect, they'll be imported historically. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but I do get some customers that want to go down that route. So once everything looks good, I'm going to go ahead and save. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. And we're going to open up TFS Migrator again. As you'd expect, the command for running an import is aptly named import. I'm going to give it a pointer to my import file. And this case is just going to be in my C demo import, import.json. When I hit enter, it's going to run a validation on the import specification file just to make sure you didn't miss anything or goof the name on your uh, DAC pack. Yes, I want to import the VSTS, otherwise the demo wouldn't be as exciting. It's going to start the import, and it's going to ask me to sign in. Two things to remember here. Number one, I want to sign in with an identity in the same AAD that I ran on the prepare command. So remember, I said, hey, I want to link all my identities to the Microsoft AAD. So I want to sign in with a Microsoft identity that will ensure that the account that gets created will be backed by the Microsoft AAD. Secondly, the user that signs in, in this case it's my identity, will be the person that owns the account. Don't worry, you can change the ownership of the account really easily once the import's done. Just something to be aware of when you go to queue the import, though. Once it signs in successfully, fingers crossed here, because I know I've had some issues with the conference internet with signing in. There we go. In a second or so, I will get some information related to the import put onto the screen. All right. So I get a couple things to keep in mind. I have a unique identifier in case for any reason you need to reach out to customer support. That's how we link, you know, what import are you actually doing? And you can see it I gave me the URL for my account. You'll notice for dry run accounts only, we actually go ahead and append a dash dry run to the account name. Production runs, we don't do that. If you don't like it for your dry run, 
You can rename it post import. That's totally fine. We just want to make it clear to you, this is a dry run import. And this is all saved to a logging file, just like you would expect for every other TFS migrator command. So if you need to go back and scoop out that unique ID for your import, you can go ahead and do that. Now in about five to 10 minutes, if I tried to go to that particular account, I would be greeted with a very beautiful status page that kind of tells me how my import's progressing. And eventually, it'll just refresh when the import's done, and I will be in my account. And of course, the user that actually queued this import will get an email in addition to that status page, letting them know when the import starts and when the import finishes. So that was a quick overview of how to run an import from TFS to VSTS using the TFS database import service. I know we only had a limited amount of time, so I couldn't go in depth into a lot of areas. I'll be here after the talk. If you want to bombard me with questions, I'm more than happy to. Besides that, we have the migration guide. It's a lovely, beautiful PDF that I spent a long time writing and making it all nice and colorful. It goes into excruciating detail on how to run an import, including workbooks to help you kind of work through it with your team and write down information that you want to do. I have every customer that tries to run an import use this migration guide, and the ones that do use it and fill out the worksheets generally end up in VSTS faster, and they say they have a much smoother experience of running the migration. And if you want to reach out to me and my team for questions directly, I'm happy to do it. I'm normally pretty quick at responding. You can reach out to VSTS data import at Microsoft.com. And lastly, fill out an evaluation. Sorry about my voice. There's nothing I can do about that right now. It's uh, kind of going away after the second day of build. But you know, I always love your feedback to make sure I can help you be the best you can be and get onto Visual Studio to Team Services as quickly as possible. With that, I'll leave you all, and I hope to see you on VSTS very soon.